In this guide, we're going to walk through the final solid development pattern, the dependency inversion principle. If you've had a difficult time understanding some of the other solid guides, you'll be happy to know that this principle is probably the most straightforward one out of all of them. The reason why I think that the dependency inversion principle is easier to understand is because it relates to a real world pattern. Before we jump into the code, let's take a look at how a large company is structured and see how that's similar to how this principle works. Let's imagine that you're the CEO of Coca-Cola. As a CEO of a multi-billion dollar company, you will have a number of responsibilities. Some of these tasks might be managing shareholders, making strategic acquisitions, deciding which markets to enter, along with a number of other high-level decisions. Now let's look at what you wouldn't do as a CEO of Coca-Cola. You wouldn't drive a truck and make product deliveries. You wouldn't pick SEO keywords for the corporate website. You wouldn't work on tax rate calculations for the accounting system. You get the idea. As a CEO, it would be your job to manage the organization and delegate responsibilities to the executives that report to you. If you spent your time with low-level work like making deliveries to 7-Eleven, you wouldn't be able to properly manage the company. In a nutshell, this is how the dependency inversion principle works. The definition for this principle is high-level objects should not depend on low-level implementations. In the same way that the Coca-Cola CEO shouldn't double as a truck driver, high-level code shouldn't perform low-level duties. For our code example, we're going to take a look at how the Ruby on Rails framework uses the Active Record module. Active Record is a powerful module that allows applications to interface with the database. What do you think would have happened if the developers who built the Rails framework attempted to place specific implementation details in the framework? For example, what if they had added a database query for users? It would essentially render the entire framework useless because it would only work if developers built out a user class that matched the vision of the Rails developers. Thankfully, the Rails dev team chose to follow the dependency inversion principle. If you analyze Active Record module source code, you'll see that the code is simply concerned with high-level functionality. This means that Active Record will let you do things such as search for records in a database, allow you to call data validations, utilize callbacks for automated behavior, and additional high-level tools. So what does the other side of the equation look like? If the parent class, in this case Active Record, manages a high level behavior, let's take a look at a child class. Here's a class called User that inherits from Active Record Base. This class contains implementation details, such as listing out specific attributes, mapping the user to other modules in the application, and defining data validations for attributes that the user class manages specifically. So in review, in our code example, the active record module is like the application CEO. It manages high level functionality with zero implementation details. This allows a module to be used for any type of application and for all models inside of the application. While the user class is like one of the app's workers. It focuses on the low level implementation details. It listens to the active record parent class and follows the guidelines laid out, much like how an employee listens to the CEO's instructions. Overall, the dependency inversion principle is a powerful design pattern that allows you to build scalable code that can be leveraged throughout an application. I hope that this has been a helpful guide to understanding SOLID's dependency inversion principle, and good luck with the coding.